Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our ISTQB AI tester certification. We completed the chapter 4 tutorials and now we'll be looking forward to continue ahead with the sample questions from this particular chapter to understand what can be asked to us in the examination and let's get going with the same. Right, so the very first question what we have for us is uh, number one, which of the following is an example of a challenge that is likely to be encountered in the course of developing and testing an ML solution? Now, that's a pretty uh, straightforward question which is coming in from the challenges what we have covered in our past discussions. And we just want to make sure that do we remember those straightforward points as per the syllabus or not and pick up the right answer. So. Uh, the trickiness would be more related to the knowledge what you have uh, you know gained so far uh, with the content being discussed and the better you know about it the more you have the relevancy to the right answer so let's get going with the options here uh, the option a what we have is uh, data anonymizing operation typically requires knowledge of various ml algorithm i think data anonymizing is a very straightforward common term and it does not really require the domain knowledge it's more from the security point of view or if you refer to the data cleansing data scrubbing or uh, data anonymizing is what we refer to that so certainly this could not be one of the uh, common challenges what we face with respect to ml solutions because this is not related to ML solution at all. It's more about preparing the data set for the ML model. Talking about the B, the data used might be unstructured data. Now again, unstructured data is not a challenge. Images, audio, free flowing text are all examples of unstructured data and can very well be used for training the ML model. So certainly this could not be again one of our options to be considered. Moving on to the next, a large percentage of the budget gets spent just in data preparation. Exactly true. This looks very, very reasonable uh, in terms of talking about data preparation because we do understand 80% or 70% of our time is being consumed. Um, sorry, I was talking about the data ratios. So uh, most of majority of our time when we talk about the ML workflow, uh, 40, 40 to 50% time is more is spent on the preparation of the data rather than training the model or evaluating the model. So preparing the data uh, and making sure that you're using the right set of data is certainly one of the constraints and that involves a very high budget and can be taken into account as a challenge. But let's cross check with the option D, the data pipeline scalability is a challenge when training the model. Um, doesn't look good. Uh, scalability typically is requirement, uh, a deployment rather than when training. So. Of course, pipelines are basically to push the information through the different uh, uh, orgs or different environments and thus it does not talk about the challenges of ML solution, right? So putting it up all together, the right answer here is C, a large percentage of budget gets spent just in data preparation can be seen as a common challenge when talking about ML solutions. All right, so moving on to the next, the next question we have is number two, the data scientist has complained that the model cannot be trained with one particular algorithm, although other algorithms work with the same training data. Which of the following option is most likely reason for this? So we are just bringing up the reason behind this particular statement being made by the data scientist that they are complaining the model cannot be trained with the particular algorithm although other algorithms work with the same training data. So I think this would be, rather than having a discussion on this, we would be uh, looking forward to pick up the appropriate answer with a justification. So most important thing here is that we have got four options, wrong data, missing data, badly labeled data, and insufficient data. So let's justify each one of them. If you have wrong data, of course, any model uh, will not be able to be trained with respect to that because an appropriate set of data to be used in order to train any particular algorithm. So since models based on some learning algorithms can be trained, then certainly this indicates that the data is correct. Talking about the next option, which is missing data, of course, the data models, again, based on learning algorithms can be trained, then uh, it indicates that there is no missing data. Uh, because if the data is missing, certainly other algorithm models can also not be trained on this. 
talking about data is badly labeled. So badly labeled, again, uh, cannot be trained for the other models too, uh, because labeling, if it is a supervised system, and then, of course, supervised system needs label data. Then if one algorithm works fine there, then the other algorithm should also work fine. So that's not something which is uh, really important for us. But when it comes to the next one, which is insufficient data, it certainly makes a lot of sense that you don't have the right amount of information or appropriate information or data set with you, which you really need to train the ML model. So since models based on some learning algorithms can be trained with the data, however, if it does not work for one particular algorithm, it is most likely to be that the quantity of the data is not sufficient for that particular algorithm. So keeping it very, very straightforward, the right answer here is insufficient data is one of the common reason where one of the uh, model or algorithm can be trained, whereas the other algorithm cannot be trained. Moving on to the next one and another question from this chapter, we are talking about question number three, an ML engineer upon finding insufficient training data is rotating labeled images to create additional training data. Which of the following approaches to labeling is being applied in the above example? So I think this question is quite an extension of our previous question itself that uh, we spoke about. So I think this pretty much uh, makes uh, very much sense that uh, we are trying to fulfill that insufficiency of data by rotating the data, but what is the technique I'm using here? What is that approach being called as? So again, we do have four options. We got crowdsourcing, argumentation, uh, we have AI-based labeling and outsourcing. Uh, quite pretty much keeping it very, very straightforward. Crowdsourcing is when you use large number of people to provide some work and uh, you collect, you know, you use their uh, efficiency to label the data and then summarize it. So in this case, one person is performing the task and that's not what we are trying to do here. Uh, looking forward to the next is augmentation. Uh, the augmentation is being performed here, of course, uh, by transforming existing label data. Uh, see AI based labeling, uh, AI is not being used for labeling of the data. So of course uh, it's not being uh, made as an ad additional statement. There is an approach that you can use AI based systems to do uh, labeling, but that's not a direct approach to decide. A human intervention will be topping up on top of it to make sure that how accurate it was and then taking the resultant. So C is not the approach being used here and moreover, uh, it clearly says an ML engineer is doing this job, right? So when they say an ML engineer is doing, then AI-based system is not involved. So C is completely inappropriate. And when it comes to outsourcing, of course, the ML engineer has not been outsourced the task to the third party, which is not being informed anywhere here. So putting it very, very straightforward, the right answer here is, B, augmentation, uh, which is being performed by transforming the existing labeled data. Well, so we got just a few examples here to get a complete understanding of what could be the typical types of questions which can be expected. I think what we understand from here is we got really, really straightforward questions for us as a lot of the content in chapter four is to the point. And, uh, but yet tricky, uh, they will not be very, very straightforward. So I hope you really understand the pain of getting to the, to the point questions too. So anyways, keeping it short and simple, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.